What up? What's up, guys? It's Bishop. Um, here, continuing uh, to read out of the book of James in the New Testament. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. And uh, so now we're on James 2. And it's uh, James 2, 1 to 26. So prepare yourselves. All right. It's titled, A Warning Against Prejudice. I hope everybody's been doing good. I've had a lot of things happen in my life here recently. Kind of been real busy, so sorry I haven't replied to some of the messages in my inbox. I will get to them within the next few days. Um, here we go. My dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in your glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? For example, suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry, and another comes in who is poor and dressed in dirty clothes. If you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but you say to the poor one, you can stand over there or else sit on the floor. Well, doesn't this, discrimi this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? Listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? But you dishonor the poor. Isn't it the rich who oppresses you and drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who slander Jesus Christ, whose noble name you bear? Yes, indeed. It is good when you obey the royal law as found in the scriptures. Love your neighbor as thyself. But if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin. You are guilty of breaking the law. For the person who keeps all the laws except one is, a guilt, is as guilty as a person who has broken all of God's laws. That's powerful. You know, if you, if you keep all of God's laws but break one, it's just as good as breaking all of them. That's, that's some deep stuff there. For the same God who said, you must not commit adultery, also said, you must not murder. So, if you murder someone but do not commit adultery, you still have broken the law. So whatever you say or whatever you do, remember that you will be judged by the law that sets you free. There will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when he judges you. So we're going to be judged on God, by God. And, and basically, and that's not all of it yet, yet, we still have 14 to 26. But just to quickly sum that up, I mean, I encourage you guys to read this, of course. But I just think it's so deep that, you know, we need to treat everybody equal um, because everybody's, you know, God's children. So we need to love everybody as ourselves. And we definitely need to just love and, and show that love and be giving constantly um, and not discriminate against someone who might look a little different than we do. Um, so, so I think, and don't suck up to the rich. I mean, like it says there, um, isn't the rich... Isn't it the rich who oppresses you and drag you into court? Like, that's so true. So we, we need to be, you know, definitely open arms to all people. But at the same time, we can't, you know, go, go one way or the other uh, based on looks. But um, so we continue here with faith without good deeds is dead. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say, Goodbye, and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing? What good does that do? Now, I read this uh, on a scripture reading video not too long ago, and that's, that's just real powerful, you know? Like, what good is it to say you have faith, and then to see someone in need, and then wish them well, but don't give to them? Like, that's just so deep. So you see, faith by itself isn't good enough isn't enough, isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Now, someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish! Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. 
And so it happened just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Rahab the prostitute is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. That's deep. That's deep. Um, basically, I just want to just quickly sum that up. You know, uh, I think it pretty much speaks for itself. You know, I wanted to do another video on um, Christianity or the denomination or, or being called a Christian, basically. Um, and so I won't get in that in the, into this video. I won't get into that in this video. But um, something I notice a lot is people who say, you know, they're a follower of Christ um, or, or they're a Christian. And, and then they're partying on the weekends and drinking a bunch and, and doing all these things of this world. And those are the actions people see. And those are the actions they only do. But if they say they believe in one God and they say that they're... Um, that you know that there's a God and but they don't tell anyone they're not spreading the good news they're not living life to glorify God they're not doing all these things that we need to do as followers you know what good is that it, I mean it just said the faith is dead so so those people's faiths you know are dead without without actions without you know constantly living your life and everything you do to glorify God um, and, and to have the realization that God is right here in this room um, so if you slip up doing this or, or go out drinking doing that, you know, God is right there. You know, you can't hide from God. Jonah tried. You know, you can't hide from God. Um, and so so I think that's so powerful that, you know, this should be encouraging. That's encouraging to me that we must remember to always be living, um, living to glorify God, but also kind of say a prayer like, for the Lord to open our eyes and ears, help us see and hear people who may be in need of Him. Because in our daily actions, we're constantly running into people. I know I am at college, at work, just out and about at the grocery store, whatever. Um, so we got to be constantly shown by our actions and shown by our spirits and our and our attitude um, that we as followers have something different that other people don't. And it's not just saying to ourselves, yeah, I believe. It's by living it. It's by doing it. So um, I hope everybody's doing well. I definitely love you guys and hope you guys had a great weekend and have a great week. And I'll reply to those messages soon.